Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 924, um, which is quite a few broadcasts now, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, topic today is actually a little bit more close to home for people. This is actually not so much relationship-centric as self-relationship-centric, which is basically to stop pretending and to actually drop the mask, to stop wearing the mask, because frankly, we're all doing it. And I want to speak to that in a more broad sense, because frankly, I'm finding this becoming a bit of a challenge to be around certain people. So let me hopefully educate you in the same place, so we're on the same page, and we can all be authentic. Anyway, before I jump to that, let me, let me introduce myself and explain who I am and why I do these talks, and then maybe you'll understand why I'm so pedantic about this stuff. My name is Barry Selby. Hi, welcome to my broadcast. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, a book I highly recommend because it's useful and helpful and really authentic. Um, I'm also a relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for divine feminine. Well, I'm starting to find myself working in a deeper, more spiritual level right now, which is what this is kind of on the theme of. It also is one informed these talks starting just over three years ago because I just posted the replay of number two today. So number one was about four days ago. So three years since then, I've been in this broadcast now called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. That title may be changing. I'm already feeling some shifts coming. It happens. And so today we're episode number 924 to get to this point. And the topic today is about dropping the masks. Stop, stop pretending in different areas. And I'll explain what I mean in a moment. And maybe you'll understand what I'm getting to. And hopefully you'll be on the same page. Let's see what happens, shall we? Um, and as always, these talks are unscripted, unplanned, and there's no bullet points. So I'm going to see where this goes, and I hope you'll join me on the journey. Um, and I'll tell you at the back end where the replays can be found so you can watch my previous broadcasts. And uh, if there's any links that pop into my head to share with you, I'll put this in the comments at the end as well. All right, enough housekeeping. Let's jump in, shall we? Let me start with what's been triggering, triggering me, and I'm letting it trigger me just so I know, I know better I'm not, and I'm doing better by talking about it. Um, but I'm aware that there's a lot of pretense going on. And <laughs> I'm doing my best to avoid the political scene right now. I'm actually watching, been watching the um, reports coming in in England because right now we're in the election in England. Um, so I'm sort of watching the election votes but keeping away from it um, because the same thing's happening there as has been happening here. So let's leave that one alone. But I want to speak about the humanity in us, those of us who are regular people. Because <laughs> there's a lot of pretense going on on the political scene, but I want to talk about us regular folks you know, like you and me. All right? And part of that that I'm watching is people are afraid to let their, bar let their, their um, I want to say their walls, it's more like, more like they're afraid to let their facades down. If you're like most people, and if you're like how I used to be, not so much now, but I used to be, it's very important to keep up appearances, to look a certain way, to present a certain impression, basically to try and be perfect. Which, first of all, is an extremely challenging thing to do in reality because there is no perfection except the perfection of who we already are as spiritual beings, having a human experience. I might go there later on, we'll see. But as humanity, we are, we are I was going to say, flawed by design. Not sin based. Let me, let, let me, let me, I gotta be careful. I'm gonna get in some deep water right now. We are imperfect beings as humanity because we're all different, unique, and strange like snowflakes. So, in a way, we're all perfect because we're all different, but we're also different, which means that we're not perfect like a perfect, perfect model. You know, there's this. Oh, not gonna go there. That's a, that's a dark road to go down. Oh, sorry, I just saw a picture of someone I want to talk about. And I'm like, that's not gonna fit here. So let me stay to this. <laughs> it's interesting when I do these talks. Sometimes I get really good downloads, and sometimes I see stuff I'm going, don't wanna go there. So leave it on over there. So we are wired by our culture and society to basically not show any flaws because if we show any flaws or weakness, there's something wrong with us because the rules say we should be all okay and everything needs to be together. And especially with the American dream, it was kind of like everyone's got the big... I mean, if you saw the commercials back in the day, I remember seeing posters in magazines and pictures in magazines of these people with like smiling white teeth with perfect perfect looks and I mean, square-shouldered and look perfect and all, all, was, all was good in the world. It was a much simpler time. But there was pieces missing, which is emotional challenges, um, past wounds that come to the surface to be dealt with. In my work with clients, a lot of times what I'm working with is to help them really trust themselves enough to let down the walls so they can reveal and then release their 
stuck emotional baggage, which can be trauma, it could be tragedy, it could be abuse, it could be wounding, it could be any number of things, but it's been stuffed inside. And I was talking yesterday um, about how a lot of men are unable to handle their emotions, which is why there's a lot of challenges with suicide and depression and other things for men as well. But for both genders in this context, I feel there's a lot of stuff to talk about, about really, first of all, bursting the bubble of the illusion that we think are okay. See, this is one of the things I want to talk about. It's been coming up for me a bit too. So, hi Marlon, nice to see you. Thanks for being here. One of the things I'm aware of is a lot of times people have been been trained about this American dream thing to make. Go for the goal, it's going to be perfect, everything's going to be fine. And I started having some thoughts recently, I'm actually journaling about it, that there's a flaw in our culture that everything's supposed to be okay, easy, and it's going to be fine. And the truth is that we don't always do it right. There is a sense of... Um, What's the word? So, um, what's the word? It yeah, will come back to me in a second. <laughs> it's it's like given it's it's it's, del, it's illusion it's illusion to, it's kind of illusion to ourselves. It's something like that. I'm not, I'm not sure what it. Never say it. Let me let me rewind this slide again because it's trying to get out. It's not coming through. So I was journaling today because I've been writing about this this new thing that's coming through, where a lot of my work is helping my clients find fulfillment in who they are, independent of the achievements that they might be going for because a lot of times here we go there we go right clear okay so a lot of us attached to external representation external achievement external result external appearances of being perfect that's the mask that we all wear and so a lot of people have been going through life i know because i've met quite a lot of them and i've been one of them at times of making sure that the appearances out to the world are perfect everything's fine whereas that isn't what's happening inside that internally, for many people, there's a lot of um, imperfection, I'll put it that way. Because we've been trained in our culture not to show any weakness, not to show any sign of flaw. F-L-A-U, not so F-L-A-W, not F-L-O-O-R. Flaw, not, not floor. no, forget it. You get my point. <laughs> and the thing is, part of, a lot of what I'm doing in my coaching work now, more than anything else, is helping people find their way back to themselves, now, now to navigate back to trusting the heart and and this is going to be kind of a head and heart conversation because a lot of us are tied to the beliefs and rules we run in our head about how it's supposed to look appear achieve compete be better than succeed with all that sort of stuff ignoring the fact that our heart may be crying out for love for compassion for kindness for support for acceptance and that's the thing we do tend to spend spend our time in two places or, or should say we avoid one to split time, spend time the other especially for men now ladies i know we're going through the same thing too because I've said it many times in previous broadcasts, the business world that we, we, we work in was created by men for men, and women, women have been trying to fit in ever since. So nowadays, I think women are having so many challenges, just like men are, of opening up to their own hearts, to connect back to their heart, to remember who they are. Because they're so busy, dri driven to achieve, to succeed, to make things happen, to be a success, in quotes, that they're, they're so caught up in their heads, they basically neck up, that they're not able to deal with the emotional side effects of not facing their heart, not owning their heart, and not loving themselves. I mean, I've talked about so many times about my self-love meditation that I, I, I offer and I sell, because I train my clients in this, is that self-love is one of the anchors and one of the keys to remembering your own worthiness. And I said remembering, not achieving, because worthiness is, let me slide off for this one. I've told, the, I've told this, lots, this stuff recently, so I'm putting it back on the table. Your worthiness is a default state. Meaning that there's nowhere to go with your worthiness. You don't, there's nowhere to go get it, there's nowhere to achieve it, and you can't lose it. All you can do is forget you have it. You are a worthy person. Doesn't matter if I know you are or not, I know you're a worthy person. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, if you're like most people, you probably forgot that you're worthy. So the key in this place is to remember that. And one reason that one reason I'm talking about my self love meditation, because when you start to remember your heart and you start going from here down to here, you start to recollect that, oh, hang on a second, it's not about what I achieve, it's who I am. Because worthiness is a state of being, worthiness is who you are. It's not about external achievements, goals, prizes, possessions, properties, that sort of stuff. Worthiness is a default state. So to recognize that when you drop the mask, when you start to remember who you are and stop pretending, is when you start showing up as a real person. And frankly, I guess it's becoming part of my passion now, 
It's helping people get real, as simple as it sounds. It's remembering that who you are is already worthy. To know that what you've been trying to look for out there will never be fulfilled until you start looking in here to know who you really are. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? <laughs> if I'm, well, it is simple in a way, but it does require a bit more work. So it's not always easy because a lot of times what we, have, we are facing, especially if you're more than 30, 40 years old, you've built a lot of layers and walls up to keep you isolated above the neck. So to drop into your heart is like, oh yeah, done, easy. Not so fast. For most people, that's a challenge because for most people, and I'm using that term generically because I don't have an actual percentage on it, but I'm sure it is most people have lost the ability or have, lost, uh, have forgotten how to stay connected and stay sourced inside their own heart. Now I'm speaking as a metaphoric, metaphysical, metaphorical, but either one, heart, not your physical heart, although I have a strong sense that one affects the other. So when you connect back to your own support of who you are, your beingness, and if you, and just sidebar slightly, if you've ever done these studies with heart math, this will come out the power of the heart is probably more than, more than like a hundred times more powerful in terms of its energetic field than our, our mind is. So why do we spend so much time in this little thing up here when we've got so much power down here? but we do because our culture keeps training us that way. And that's one of the things I'm attempting to speak up about. We have a misdirected focus in our culture, which is about mental acuity and ability to achieve and get things done and make things happen rather than, than emotional maturity, emotional mastery. That's, that was all talking about yesterday, by the way. Emotional mastery of who we are. So you can actually live in our heart from a place of kindness, compassion and care for other people and thrive as a fulfilled being doing whatever we want to do in the world. That's the dream I have, that we do that in life, that we find our way back to our hearts, back to ourselves, and really become compassionate and caring for who we are so we can then be more, how do I say it? More effective by being than we are by doing. Which doesn't sound, it doesn't make sense to us. If you say it like that, it's like, it doesn't make sense. But the reality is, who we are is way more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. In a way, my job is to remind you that you are already worthy. My job is to remind you that you already are powerful. My job is to remind you that you have all you need inside. If you're ready to stop chasing that out there all the time, to pursue and keep making it happen, and willing to start focusing internally on who you are and what you're about, that's where I can help you. And that's where I recommend you look to for your own self-support. I've, I've decided, but I've been, I've been going through a lot of my old Facebook lives because I've been posting them to my LinkedIn channel because I thought I'd put some up there. Although I can only put the ones under 10 minutes because LinkedIn has a limit on the amount you can put up there. So I've been going through and just, and, and because I'm going through like one every 40 or 50 broadcasts, it's interesting to go back and see what I was talking about. What I'm gratified to discover through all of my past broadcasts going back three years almost, well, I'm not that far back yet in my, in my review, is this about self-love and self-support. It's where we live, is who we are, is inside. And it doesn't matter how much out there you create. I, I know people who have mansions up on hills in LA with 40 rooms and 15 bathrooms and everything else, and they're as lonely and as empty as anything because they don't connect to who they are. The the uh, um, what's the word? Um, not achievement, wrong word. The um, accumulation. That's a good word. Hi Sue, nice to see you. The accumulation of stuff to make us feel better is an ineffective, and imperfect, and ultimately unsatisfying task. The true satisfaction comes from within. The same as fulfillment. The same as a trust. The same as recognition. The same as worthiness. The same as all the things I'm talking about. It all starts inside, and so. What I'm starting to find my work shifting toward, and I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm still developing, so I'm not going to give you like, declarations yet, but I'm focusing a lot more right now over my clients learn to navigate back into themselves and learn to trust themselves again. And also to discover just how much power they have tapped into when they turn back into their heart. Now, today is 12-12, which is a big day in, in some astrological terms, um, 12th of December. And we are coming towards the end of the, this big cycle. I mean, it's, it, it's a lot of things changing because it's 2020 and all the different stuff. I'm not a numerology person, so I'm just telling you what I've been reading. So I'm not an expert in that part. However, I am clear that this is a good time, a, a very powerful time 
does not set out your intentions for the new year. Now, I'm going to talk about this in the new year, but not resolutions, intentions. And to have a clarity about what you want to do internally to reconnect back to your heart and to really discover your true, authentic nature where your real fulfillment and real success lives. So if that appeals to you, reach out to me. I'm going to talk about it in a moment about how you can find out more about what I do and what get to work with me. But I want to make sure you get this, this, I wanted to give you this like reminder to so to speak. There's a lot of things changing right now. As I mentioned at the beginning about watching the election in England, we've got another one coming up in this country in, about, in less than a year. So lots of things may be changing externally, which is why it's so important for us to be accessed and referenced internally. So we're not swayed and governed by other people's opinions. Finding a way back to love yourself, to trust yourself, to really depend upon yourself is where the magic lives, which is why I'm so adamant about that. And I've talked about it a lot recently because I'm finding it more and more as my focus with my clients. Whether you're a single or in a relationship, it's always about coming back to loving yourself. It's always about trusting and remembering yourself. It's always about knowing and, is, and remembering how amazing you already are. I will help you remember, remember that if you forget. Um, I think that's, that was my, I think that's it for now. I wanted to basically get this on the table because it's becoming more, pre, more, relevant, pre, more relevant and prevalent to me, which I'm writing about it now. I'm just journaling and putting out a lot of thoughts. I'm gonna be launching some new things in the new year for sure. And this is a taste of what's coming. So if this is something that resonates for you, you want to get some help, um, I'll put some links in the comments for you to reach out. One, a, a link to, have a, to get on my calendar, have a chat with me, which would be a complimentary chat between you and me, and see if you want to get some help, if, if I, what, I help, what I offer will help you. If what you're looking for is something I can help you with, makes sense to have both of those. Um, I'll also put a link in the comments for my self-love meditation, because if nothing else, you start with self-love, it will transform your life. I am adamant about that, I'm pedantic about that, and I'm emphatic about it, that the more you love yourself, the easier life gets. So my self-love meditation is designed for you to do that in an easy, effective, and a reminded, disciplined way, because it's a 30-day practice, that will change your life. So that link will be in the comments too. Um, so those two things will be in the comments. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, um, where have you been? <laughs> this is my daily Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Barry Selby. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do put them up on uh, archives onto my business page and onto my YouTube channel, which I'll tell you about as well. So again, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page on Facebook, usually at the same time every day, but it's definitely every day now, um, for over three years now. Excuse me. I've been doing it for over three years, but daily for about two years, nine months, give or take. So there's lots of replays. So you can go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, where you can find a lot of my broadcasts, but not all of them, a bunch of them are there. If you want to see all of my broadcasts, oh, please like my page, by the way, on Facebook. Um, subscribe to my channel on YouTube, which is Barry Selby, also Barry Selby, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Subscribe to my channel. You can get a, um, you can subscribe to that. And then in there is a playlist you can get into and peruse. There's all 900 plus broadcasts there for you to search through for keywords, to look for titles, scan through, find what you like, watch and enjoy. Um, and, and let me know what you think. I do appreciate you watching my broadcast. I love you being here, of course. I'm biased about that because I like the company. If you want to get help, don't sit on your hands. Reach out, get support. Message me for social media if you want to do that or choose the links in the comments afterwards. Either way works. Um, and get some support to connect back to your heart. Drop the walls, drop the masks. Let go of that perspective, perception of facade and remember who you really are. Who you are is already worthy. Who you are is deserving. Who you are is loving. I hope you remember that if you forget. That's why I do these talks and that's why I work with my clients. If you want to get more of that support, find me, message me, etc., etc. So with that, I thank you for watching as always. This is my daily Facebook Live. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And um, take care of yourself. Actually, that's my reminder. As always, please take care of yourself and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.